Garlic God, fairly new player, 300, 400, rival plus uppercut, timestamp for fight in video two, four to five star bracket thing for the opportunity, Twitch name, Garlic Garlic. Let's go, Garlic. All right, he's got Camasite Moon, already looking good. Looks like he just pulled into Reeker. Check that to see if it's boss. He's got the rival uppercut. He's got a charm on his weapon, so I'm sorry that's going to bring down your aim a little bit. If you want to debuff yourself, man, you can, but I, I would recommend against the charm right off the bat. Just a joke, by the way. <laughs> Just a joke, by the way. All right, we got a couple of zombies over here. Let's see. I think, yeah, I'll just watch it until I see something. Ooh. Ooh. That guy has no idea he exists. What is this? This is Garlic's gameplay. We're, we're going to go through coaching. Not a bad lineup. They have no idea this guy exists, except that it's red, right? So they're looking around trying to figure it out. He's going to wait till he gets a for sure shot or close to it. That was a good try. Damn. That boy. I'm just throwing it out there, guys. I'm just throwing it out there. I feel like this Corvid Brood who headshot him got a little lucky. I, I don't think that Corvid Brood hits that shot. Uh, maybe 20% of the time he hits that shot. So a little unfortunate, but it does happen. Did the wire in the window block it? No, I think he just missed. I think he just missed. You can see that he's, when he lines it up, you can see that he's a little to the right. The head's right here. He's a little to the right, and I think he ends up moving just a hair over still, and it just goes to the right of his head. And I don't think that's a bad shot for anyone who sees that shot. So... The uppercut is not the fastest bullet in the world. It's a uh, 410 muzzle velocity, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's 410. And so if this guy was to wiggle a little bit to the left, uh, then this hits. But it, if he goes to the right or stays on the same current path he's on or doesn't move, then I think it misses. But if he was to just like crouch to the left, which he's already shown that he does, right see he's already crouched to this guy's right or to his left you see what i'm saying like there's potential that hits there's potential <clears throat> all the waiting only for a whiff and insta death i mean that's a lot of hunt dude that's a lot of hunt it happens i will say at the very beginning of this fight um it's something I see happen a lot in Reeker. There's three main buildings. There's this one, there's this one, and then there's the one on the right. I highly recommend coming into Reeker with the idea of um, getting a piece of Reeker for yourself. So all these buildings are super pinnable by most weapons. Definitely long ammo. Uh, medium ammo pins most of the shit. Compact ammo, not so much, but a lot of people put FMJ on compact. And it also does not have the highest height advantage. Even if you get on roofs here, you're tied with height advantage for all the buildings and you're exposed right in the middle. So claiming a building like this one or this one or the one to your right gives you a foothold into Port Reeker, gives you height advantage and allows you to kind of scope out um, the compound without exposing yourself too much. So if you were to insta die, like let's say someone just randomly finds you and headshots you, it takes them a little while to get to you and you're able to get a solo res off or your teammates able to get a res off. I just highly recommend coming in with the thought of clearing this building or clearing this building or clearing the building on the right and then trying to take over the rest of Reeker from those positions. Especially if you're solo, you could get flanked super easy in the middle here. So yeah, he spends time lining up the shot. Boom. I don't know if I would have taken a second shot there, to be honest. Because um, the uppercut's pretty slow. But still, the chance that that dude hits that kind of shot is... Uh, 
not high. Let's go with that. Not bad. Not bad. I really like dropping down low here. Cuts off a ton of angles, lets you rotate. I don't like staying here. I don't like staying right here. I would have rotated more to the left. All right, for those who don't know, uh, from here, right on the other side of this is a little ramp that leads up. And you can use that ramp. It's new, it hasn't been in there forever. I shouldn't say it's new. It's It's been in there for like eight months or something or 10 months, whenever they redid Riku. But um, I would have liked to see you play the ramp here, take a left and go ramp, because then you're not at a height disadvantage. It leaves you opportunities to push into the building if you want to with your shotgun. Um, just leaves you with a lot more options. Pushing under the right here just exposes you. People can jump on you. If you were to get ambushed from a team behind you, that could be really bad as well. So I really don't like putting yourself in the middle here unless you already have some control of... of Port Reeker. Like, you gotta be thinking not just how do I get shots down on these guys, but what's my escape plan if shit's going south? What what do I do if an optimat's around the corner? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, in, in a lot of these situations, it's just kind of like, you're like, I, I hope things work out instead of planning ahead and being like, yes, this will make things work out. And sometimes they won't, even if you have that plan, but you gotta have the plan, right? What gives you the best odds? See, you're pushing in. They already have height advantage. You already know they're here. So they could peek any of this stuff at any moment. You don't know exactly where they're at. You hear one person running on the right. The other two could be crouch walking. I mean, one could be right here for all we know, right? Very risky. Nice. Decides to take height. Not horrible. I would have liked to see him to rotate on the left side a little bit safer. But he evened out the height advantage. Took building. Goes for Sticky. He's freaking out a little bit. Not bad. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you were coming down from these stairs, the reason why I said ooh after you get this banish here is you haven't really been able to hear anything for the past, what was it, like 10 seconds because you were on fire, butchers chasing you, there's a sticky going off, you know, like, you know, in the background. You can't really hear their exact placements. So 100%, you are without a doubt the most exposed to your left here. Like once you vanish, you're most exposed to this door right here. And you know they were around this door before you came in here. And you don't check to see if the door is closed, right? Like you don't know if the door is closed or open. You don't check the angle. You don't make sure no one's creeping in or pushing in or any of that. If you wanted to check from up here, I think that would have been okay. But you end up just going like right past like you, there's just you don't even look man i'm thinking you're worried about where you came in from and someone might be wrapping around that's fine but you gotta check the angles that you're the most exposed to like even if it's just for a glance and if you think Welcome no one's home, there you still need to make sure Welcome the door is home, closed dark clinics 94 because the door will alert you to um other people pushing in and stuff, it'll stop not only their lines of sight, but if they want to come in with a shotgun, you'll at least hear the door open. It'll give you a little time to be like, okay, there's a person at that door, right? And then you check here, you see that it's open. If there was a guy sitting there, you would have got shot in the back like six times by now, especially with that carbine. And look, there's people there. <laughs> so you just got, you got decently lucky that they decided not to push there, in my opinion. Melchior, thanks so much, though. For giving it a tier one. Dark Linux, great to see you. Great angle. I love this. I love this. All right, you got two angles here. 
You got two angles. You got the angle you were holding initially with the uppercut. I do think this is a better angle for uppercut. I don't think you should have your shotgun out here. And if you want to play to your, your loadout strengths, which is your shotgun, I do think you should take the right angle. So if you whip out your shotgun like you do here, don't hold these angles. Go over to the right, which you end up doing. Yep, yep. And I think this is a much better angle for shotgun. I think this is a great place to hold. The only thing that's uh, bugging me about this is this lantern. It can block some of your shot with uh, the glass here. So I would like you to take a little bit further of a right side angle, unless you're pretty confident that, um, I would say if, if you're feeling your shotgun is gonna one shot, even with some of it potentially getting blocked, because this lantern will take the bullets. Uh, it'll break, but it'll take the bullets. So you could break it with like your uh, melee from your shotgun if you wanted to make noise. I don't think you wanna make noise in this uh area also would cut off this straight angle because people can see you from over here when they're crossing so i would go a little bit more to the right here let's see what he ends up doing but i do like him taking the right side angle over the left side the right side is so much better in this scenario with his weapon yep yep he takes further on the right this is beautiful this is beautiful just sit like right here bro your your cousin so generally speaking not everyone's gonna hear this but people can hear you crouch walk here and wiggling a little bit isn't gonna be enough to save you from people just knowing your general position it's better if they don't know your general position so once you get into a com comfortable position i just stop moving i just stop moving here like all the wiggling is gonna do is allow the enemy to locate you a little bit better that guy obviously didn't hear you or he wouldn't have been pushing like that. But if they were, <laughs> if they were to hear you, it would put you in a worse position. <clears throat> I don't get the rotate here, personally. Person's a little clueless. Nice. <coughs> Good hit. Yeah. Not bad. I like the dino throw there. It's not bad at all. I don't like that play. I don't like that play. I understand why you went for it, but I, I think it was just going to be a wasted hellfire from what I heard. Door shut. Okay. With what you have here, man, uh... After your initial kill here. Boom. Okay. After that initial kill, you might, like, if you want to fully reload, you could come back here. Um, it, generally, you get two shots with the uh, Caldwell Rival. So the fact that you still have one left means that you don't necessarily have to reload right away. And you can kind of react. You just took out a player. So it's one of those, like... Are they going to push me? Are they going to try to rush? Are they going to try to rush res? Maybe they're necroing. Like, you're you're listening for sound cues, right? Uh, because you still have shots left. This can one-shot. You still have full uppercut. You got options. It's not like a Romero where you shoot once. It's like, well, fuck, now I have to reload, right? So I would say with killing him initially first off, I don't think you need to reload right away. You can but it's just, it, I would listen more to see if there is an outplay potential on his remaining teammates. On top of that, I wouldn't make a ton of noise in here because of what I was saying earlier. It lets them know kind of exactly where you're at. You can shift your angle just a little bit here. So this is where you kill him from, right? Boom. Okay. So you could stay like over here and they would still have trouble finding you. You could also open this door and attack from this angle because it's a 1v1 currently that we know of with the uh, female on this side because she's like, she's chilling in that building to the left a little bit. So you should be able to see her from this angle. But what I would have liked to seen happen here 
is you to at least put on some pressure, put a burn on the dude, maybe um, get dynamite, like have the dynamite stick ready in case you hear necro going off or anything like that. Because timing wise, if you hear a necro uh, start to go and then you start priming dynamite, there, there's two things that'll happen. They try to hold it because they think that the guy will survive the dynamite or that the dynamite's not going for the guy, right? So they might hold and it puts you kind of in a 50-50 of like, are they gonna hold the necro and try to res? Or are they gonna stop necroing? In which case you can take the corner with your dynamite and throw it at the person who was going for the necro. It depends on position and all that. Um, in this situation, I think it would have worked. It puts on a ton of pressure and i think it's a, a valid option so there's the dynamite option there's waiting to see exactly what they do with the ammo you have maybe they go for necro you just put them down again with your shotgun shot um and then there's also just burning right there's just burning the dead body that you killed you have decoy fuses and you have a hellfire so your your options are quite a lot but instead you you go for a reload and then you rotate like super far down and it seems like in the back of your head right here, you were like, oh, maybe I should watch the body. And it's like that, that should be in your head from moment one of killing the body, right? Because <clears throat> you're like over here and you're like, okay, okay, let me keep this angle. And now you're ready to watch the body. And this is like, how long is it? This is like six seconds after you killed the body, right? <clears throat> you, you got a kill, you got a plus one. And then you just didn't cover it. You didn't put on pressure. Uh, like the other opponents, the, the teammates of this person have no reason to do anything right now except try to uh, outmaneuver you because the guy's not burning. Um, you're not holding his body. You're So they could go for like a regular res. They could go for like a choke or a dynamite where they think you are because they hear you and then get the res on the back end of it. Like there's a lot of options for them. And the more time you give them to think, the better choice they'll make. So the more pressure you you utilize and put on the opponent, the more mistakes they'll make. And that's why I love insta burning in this game uh, when it comes to putting pressure. And they've given us a ton of tools recently to insta burn. So I'd highly recommend exerting some pressure because it puts it in the next stage of this fight. But see, like she goes for this. It seems like she's pretty clueless onto where you are in general. And so it almost works out. She goes for reload. All right, I would have loved to seen a rotate. up these stairs right here. I don't know why you didn't rotate these stairs, but by the time you get to the top, you'll have this reloaded. And if what's her name sticks the res, it's enough time for you to get out the window and jump on them and shoot them and kill them. Or to catch them when they're running away from the door. Coming back here just gives them space and room to uh, res. I do think with the choices you've made so far though, the position you're in, I think this dynamite's a great play where you know that the person is potentially going for the res below you. Knowing the kind of gameplay we've seen so far, how they didn't pay attention to you when you were inside, uh, after you killed the teammate and all that stuff, they were shooting at someone across the way. Uh, I would say this person is generally pretty oblivious, the, the female player, and you could definitely get away with just in your head being like, she's gonna go for res. I would put money that she sticks res here and I would just throw on the best angle I can to get it on top of the person who died because then I think you get a double kill. <laughs> See, and you hear the res, the res happened over here and you throw your dynamite over here. So if you threw your dynamite here, I think you get a double kill. Maybe just a solo kill. And then, like I said here, we haven't heard movement from that building in a while. And if you don't get a burn or anything with this Hellfire, it's kind of useless, right? So you don't have any direct knowledge that someone's in that area. You knew that someone was in that area in the past 30 seconds, but you don't know if they've stayed there or anything. You only have so many consumables that you can throw. 
Um, and you have currently no way of getting them back. There's no bodies to loot. There's nothing like that. So I don't think you throw something so valuable like a Hellfire right here. I would like to see you throw it when you have a more surefire hit. What up, Nog? <laughs> it's good to see you, Nova. I like it. A lot of people ignore the lanterns and stuff and get lit on fire later. <laughs> yeah, what a wreck. Not a bad angle. Nice kill. Once again, get a burn. Get a burn. There we go. There we go. This should have happened the first time, but you got it second time. Good pressure. See, and now you're... See how it's causing a ton of movement? See how it's causing a ton of movement here? And the position you're in right now is commanding. You have full control of this building. You've taken bars from opponents and you have a weapon that does 126 damage, which means you can body tap a lot of them. There's two teams fighting on the outside that are like outside of cover. <clears throat> so you can kind of poke and prod whenever you want. You have height advantage. You're in a great position here, man. Good shot. Good try. Ooh, I like the barrel play. That is something that is something you always have to watch out here. I have died from this window so many times. So many times. Someone goes in there, you feel like you have good control, and then they just sneak. They just sneak right there and get a nice solid angle on this window. So I highly recommend right about here to start looking at that window for for any kind of movement any kind of that because the the only places people generally peek even really good players here is they'll peek right here and they'll peek here those are like the only two peaks that pretty much everyone peeks when they're in that building and you're up in this window so you just got to look here you don't see her there look here if you don't see anything there look back here and you just rotate between the two you could also cut a little bit more to your left and just hold this angle and wait for her to peek here or him or <laughs> I don't know who's in there actually. Uh, but just wait for this character to peek over here. You could do that as well. Uh, it's a little bit safer. You could get walla banged, but generally people don't walla bang there. But yeah, you end up getting hit from that that window. It is it is a rough window to see, man. So I don't blame you from getting hit from there. I've been hit there many, many, many times. It's just those are the two places to look if you're peeking that angle right there. Go for the reload while you're regening. It's perfect. Good time to do it. Pick up the bounty. Bold move. Okay. Couple people alive. All right. Ooh. Yeah. I don't like that peak. I don't like that peak. There's a couple peaks you could go for here. So when you see the, when you see that, you know that person's kind of back by that house and then it, the other person's in one of the two houses, right? There's these two little houses. Let's see if you see it when you open up. But yeah. You'll see it here. All right. There's a house here, and then there's a house to the right of it. Um, when you're peeking this angle, you have now just exposed yourself to that angle where you already knew someone was and watching, and then there's this person here. If they do not mess up, okay, they both just body tap you. doesn't even have to be a headshot. They both just body tap you. You die here, right? 
So you generally in hunts are always looking for the angles in the back of your head when you're trying to peek someone, play aggressive. You're looking for the angles that cut one or two people out of the picture. So it puts you in a 1v1 and they have to hit head to kill you. So generally speaking, when you see something like this, there is another door to your, that'd be your south, right? There's another door to your south, a slide door. And then if you peek that angle, it peaks these green houses. She's in the far left one. You can't quite see that from that angle over there. But I bet if you went over here and opened that slide door and then made a little bit movement over there, I bet this person peaks on that side and you only get into a 1v1. It completely cuts off the person over here. If you peek this and she doesn't take the bait, doesn't come over here for the 1v, then you come back in and I would probably take the top and keep shooting at the chick in the back because then the girl up close doesn't have an angle on you. They would have to wall bang you or something like that. Do you see how there's like different positions will isolate one of the opposing team's point of views, player's point of views to where it, it just makes it to one person has a clear shot and the other person does not. I would highly recommend going for those angles and always in the back of your head know if there's two people on this side, there's a really good chance if they don't mess up, I lose. So let's not put ourselves in that position. Solid reload, safe reload. This, this is a great angle. Cuts off this person on the left side and lines you up with where she used to be. I like this angle a lot more. Right angle. See, and now that they're both like, you know, butt buddy in it, they're both really close to each other. Um, this is where consumables come in. Generally, if you peek an angle like this, once again, if they both body tap, you're dead. So if you have the hellfire, you can you know, just barely expose yourself or go up top and throw a hellfire down. See if you hit one of them, that one will go for heal. And then you're in a 1v1 with the other one that you didn't hit. If you hit both of them, then you just start laying down lead and and hoping that uh, they don't randomly headshot you while on fire 360, you know, <laughs> doing whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? So like the hellfire would have came in handy here if you didn't waste it earlier. She rotates back, which is not a good play by this chick. Easy redown. Not a bad job cutting off the angle. Probably going for a res, so I don't think you're wrong to hold that. You uh, had enough distance. Nice kill, nice kill. You can hear someone climbing ladder there. And you just killed two. So now, yep. You should go top. Beautiful. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, that's that's a rough one. I hate when that shit happens, man. Oh! Okay, you end up in a similar position. To... And then you get her before she's able to bring the gun up. GG's, man. GG's. Okay. So up, when you go up top, you can, this is really risky, but you can try to bait the shot by like vaulting and vaulting back. Um, I think you can get up over on this right side and like jump up here to where, because of the bug shit that's there, I think you can get up and jump up there so you don't have to do the vaulting animation. But, uh, cause y you know they're on this corner over here, you just heard him climb. You can push over here, but when I hear shotguns and I have a shotgun, I always feel like we're gonna trade. In this situation, you're a solo, they're not. It's not a bad situation to trade in because you can self revive. Um, I still don't like the idea of putting myself in a position to where we kill each other. And so in the back of my head, I'm like, how do I stop myself from trading with another shotgun? One good way to do that 
would be to catch them off guard after they've shot. Like you hear the Romero, the Romero shoots and you're like, okay, they have to reload. This is an opportunity, right? The other option is to just outspace shotguns. Even though you have a shotgun, you also have an uppercut and just stay outside of like 10, 15 meters from them. So in this situation, picking up a lantern and going by the teammates and burning them and then kind of holding angles over there to stop them from being able to rush you, I think is a safer play, a uh, much safer play, and it still keeps the fight going. Like they have to do something or their teammates burn to death. Generally speaking, you got a couple options here. The option you choose is really risky. I don't mind this option because like I said, self-res exists. You have self-res. If you trade, you 100% win. You just res in 10 seconds, G easy GG, you're done. So I don't mind this push. I'm just saying there are safer plays to where you don't get in that situation. Um, that being said, you decide to do this and this shit happens, man. This shit happens way too often, especially on low FOV. This is one of the reasons I like higher FOVs um, is because you lose movement on the left and right and maybe through some of the cracks and stuff, it becomes harder to see the peripherals of up close. And so you're kind of just going on a guessing game of where you think they are. You'd heard them open the door, so there's a good chance they're right below you. And it seems like you're like, okay, maybe I take the, the wrist, jump down, see if I can find them. And when you end up jumping down, they decided, so they just opened this door right where you are, and then they moved to the right because they didn't want to get shot from here. And then you took their spot. Like, you jumped to where they were. And now that person's probably freaking out because someone just jumped down, like, right where they are and might not even be looking that way. Might be, like, looking at the teammates or something like that. <laughs> and so they're kind of shocked. You couldn't find them because uh, you're just looking over here. I would highly recommend checking around you if you don't see them initially. So, like... You can, it's something that I said earlier as well. But there's angles you're exposed to when you drop down, right? There's this angle over here. Then there's the angle on the right. There's angles you're exposed to that you don't check whenever you put yourself in a position where there's multiple angles. You you check one of them and then you just ignore you. Like if they're over there, they fucking kill me. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> And I would highly recommend checking over here if you don't see any movement, check over here. If you missed them and they kill you, it's like, okay, maybe I need to check a little bit better. But generally speaking, just quick check, quick check, quick check. Like, just check the areas. Check them off the box. Even if nobody's there, it's way safer. It'll improve your gameplay. And you'll be more situationally aware. Uh, so if you checked over here and you initially don't see, even if they're behind this wall, you still have enough time uh to react by checking to the right and then you'll hear a step you'll hear someone go boom boom like right here and then you have enough time to swing and trade right so the angle you're exposed to the most is on the right and that's the angle you don't check and they happen to be there they miss <clears throat> surprise that didn't kill but the arm was raised and all that stuff shotgun rng oh. Not bad, shutting the door. Honestly there, uh, you can try to put a little bit more pressure on, but you saw him running around with a knife. And generally, I don't trust someone running around with a knife within like five meters of me. <laughs> kind of what I was saying earlier where I kind of get out of shotgun range and uh, I would rather play like the, you gotta hit me twice, I gotta hit you once in the head or twice in the body kind of game. But you get the kill. Because she was going for reload. She got caught in the reload. Easy GG. But it was exactly... Let me let me find it here. It's exactly this thing. When you come down here. Is he exposed to like this angle over here? Is he exposed to the angle like on the long side? Or is he exposed to the sliding door on the left? And it's the only angle he doesn't check. He checks this one. He checks this one over here. And then he just keeps running with his back to the door. And that's what I'm saying is you just don't quickly check the angles that you're most exposed to and it'll bite you in the butt. It'll eventually bite you in the butt. It doesn't in this clip and any of the times you don't check. But when you don't check those angles, you will get punished eventually in this game uh, for not clearing all the angles. So I highly, highly recommend clearing those angles before pushing down this hallway or any of that jazz. 
same thing. Whenever you put yourself in like a brand new situation, you just jump down a floor or something, check the angles, then move, right? <clears throat> I never think about angles that much. Thanks, bro. Two, no problem, man. Uh, overall, I think solid fight, man. Solid fight. I think a couple things we saw that he did fantastically well was one, he didn't overextend because he didn't ever really need to. Everybody was within... Uh, you know, maybe 20, 25 meters. People didn't really push in. And when they were getting close, he always brought up like some kind of don't come in here, whether it be with dynamite or shotgun or anything like that. Like that makes people not want to push a building. I could say it works for me where I'll be running up, running up. And then I hear a shotgun pop off like four times. Someone die. And I'm like, Okay, maybe I don't push into that shotgun with my, you know, sparks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I take a different approach, come down a different way, or, you know, enter the building on a different angle than exactly where someone just died to a shotgun. And so, like, you hold the doors really, really well to where it's like, okay, people are kind of not wanting to push into this building. Some At some point in time, they might want to get a little fishy with you, but they never end up doing it. Uh... I also think, generally speaking, just throwing it out there, using your consumables is way better. Using your consumables and wasting them is way better than never using your consumables. So I talked about you throwing that Hellfire and how I thought it was a waste because you didn't have like a guaranteed hit. There was a couple opportunities later on in the fight where I think you um, could have used that Hellfire. But I would much rather see you use it and waste it than have it in your inventory till the end of the fight and you never used it and <laughs> like it's just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? So keep using your your consumables, find out what works and what doesn't, and then refine it to where it's just Welcome always home, working. Good right? hunter. That's kind of what you want to do. Welcome home. But take shoot you under you, you miss train. every shot you don't Greetings take. From Germany, less than three. Choo choo train. Thank you for the four months. Keeping the dream alive, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. You helps a lot. Garlic, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sending a clip, man. You did great, dude. You did great. Where should I send a clip if I want to review? In the Discord. You can check out Community Nights and then just post the link in there. And when you're talking about I'm like super bad or whatever, dude, I, I would recommend not bringing yourself down.